Hey, what's up, YouTube? Today is the day I am finally releasing my Fade system I showcased almost a year ago. It's been completely reworked, and phew, this has been a struggle. I tried to approach this in so many different ways, and I couldn't find a nice and elegant solution to this until recently. No, this isn't meant to be the ultimate solution, right? It's certainly one way of doing it. It has a couple of limitations, but still covers a pretty wide range of use cases, and I think it's a great starting point to build your own system. The project is super clean, blueprints, functions, variables are all commented, and it's all very nicely documented, so it can hopefully be as educational as possible and be built upon as easily as possible. So, let's see what the system is capable of. Now, this is a two-part system. First, there's a shader-only driven effect for simple cases like pillars, trees, and such. That doesn't require any particular logic. This is based on a simple material function, which provides a great deal of customization, so you can precisely control how the fades behaves. That's the first part. Now, the second part of the system allows you to fade way more complex geometries like houses, buildings with multiple floors and allows you to control the visibility per flow of a set of actors. Let's see that in action. I'm entering that house and we can see its interior. The two closest walls are hidden according to my camera view. Note that houses can be at any world location and can be rotated along the z-axis in any way. It doesn't need to be at ground level or be aligned with the world axis to work right. This house and all other houses in this level have the same exact material. So although the house is split into multiple meshes, this solution is very efficient and your meshes will likely be dynamically batched into a single draw call. That floor is only 4 meters high, while the one below is 6 meters high, so that's also a feature supported by the system. Those colored actors aren't using any material functions, they are fully opaque, their visibility is handled by the system, so if I go downstairs, those two box actors will be hidden, and if I go upstairs, they are visible again. Cool. Now, you can also mix both systems, meaning I can still have assets in a particular floor that are occluding my player, right? And so I can use the fade shader based effect on top of that more complex house fade system. Ok, cool, one more feature. A house can still occlude your character while you're outside. And when that happens, the entire house is hidden and its interior is masked and blacked out using a post-processed material, which samples a texture at coordinates you can very easily customize per house. See here that L-shaped house, the mask is L-shaped as well. And that's pretty much it for the demo. Now, despite heavily relying on masked materials, if you use a full prepass, I think it's a very efficient and elegant solution. Note a single blueprint is ticking, pretty much everything is even driven to start and stop timers that doesn't even need to run at a high frame rate. Ok, great, now let's dive in a little bit deeper and see how to set up and use the system. First things first, we have to add this fade character component to our pawn or character. This comes with a bunch of settings, they all are well documented, so I won't go over them in details here, it would bore you to death. Anyway, that's all you have to do for the shader driven effect to work properly. Now, it could even work without that component, but I'm using the component to convert the pawn's world space location to screen space in a function, so that this mask effect behaves correctly in case the pawn isn't centered in the viewport for whatever reason, like a camera shake or something. Ok, cool. For houses, though, there's a little more work to do. First, you will likely want to set up a custom fade object channel in your project settings, like so. Now, the house needs to be built a certain way, so let's see. We are going to create an actor and do this step by step. I have there a couple of static meshes that makes up my house. First, I have whatever is at the ground level, so any of this will never occlude the player. So it can use whatever material you want and be split into multiple meshes, however you like. Then I have my first four walls. Those need to be split because we need to encode both the floor level and the way each wall is facing in their custom primitive data. The first one corresponds to the floor level. No, those walls are at floor zero, right? 
but based on our camera IO, we still want them to be conditionally hidden, even though our player is on that same floor. So floor 0 isn't going to work, nor is 1, because they all would be hidden. And so what we do for walls instead is we set a value that is in between floors. So here it's 0 0.5. We do the same for the walls above. It's not floor 1 nor floor 2, but 1.5. The second primitive data is used to encode the north, east, south, west direction each wall is facing. This is in local space relative to this blueprint, right? So the wall facing the positive x axis here is index 0, positive y axis is index 1, negative x axis is index 2, and negative y axis is index 3. And you may choose to do that in a slightly different way, right? Like here with that house. I encoded all these walls with index 0, so facing positive x-axis, despite those walls facing other directions, because it felt better to group them all together like that and have them all be hidden at once. Anyway, and then I have meshes for each floor level, so floor 1 and floor 2. Now these are meant to be visible from any point of view, so we set a negative value for the direction, and that's pretty much it when it comes to meshes. To sum up, you basically just have to split your meshes in such a way that you can encode those two primitive data correctly. The floor level, and don't forget that walls must have in-between floor values, so 0 0.5, 1.5 and so on, and the north, east, south, west direction in local space. Hopefully that makes sense. Then we apply our material. Then we need to set up a couple of box volumes. I'm going to create a first one. It should generate an overlap event, query only, object type is our fade object channel. We ignore everything but our fade object type, so it generates an overlap event upon collision with our camera volume, which is automatically created and handled by the system. Once that is done, we'll need to add a tag to that volume. And that tag is mostly a way for the system to make sure that the overlap events with our camera volumes are ones that should be indeed dealt with, and also to help the system gather all fade volumes within that blueprint. Now the tag name has to be the same that is specified in our fade character component here. You can change it to whatever you like, but it has to be that one. Now that box volume is used to describe the interior volume of that house. You can use as many as you like. I will need two here, one for the first two floors, and one smaller for the third one up here. Right, we need one more box volume, and that's to describe that house overall bounds. Unfortunately, we can't rely on the actor's bounds, since the house may be rotated, and that would give us bounds in world space. And so we want the bounds in local space, so we create another box volume just for that. It's fine, this one is quite straightforward, it doesn't have any collision. It has to have a tag as well though, but another one, the one that is specified in our fake character component, here. And then you set that box volume x and y extends, z is irrelevant, so that it contains everything in the house that is meant to be hidden at some point, so walls, floors and such. Now that is one of the limitations of that system. It's best working with square and rectangle shaped houses. You could have a cylindrical building or of any other shape, but then you may run into issues in case other houses are partially overlapping that house's bounds. Nothing is perfect, right? And you could further improve the system to handle such cases, but to keep the system somewhat simple, this is its main limitation for now. Plus, I don't think it will be such a problem for most cases. Anyway, moving on with our house actor, one last thing to do is to add that lightweight fade actor component to the blueprint. All we care about are the settings. Let's add our floors. First one is 6 meters tall, second one is 4 meters. The nice thing here is that I don't need to specify the third one, because the height specified in the last entry will be used for any floor above. That's done so if in case you have a 30 store building and they all have that same floor height, you don't have to create a list of 30 entries. Unless you need to control actors' visibility per floor, obviously, that still needs to be on its own list entry. 
you'll likely want to do that per instance in your level though like here i have my house blueprint floor zero i have listed all these actors and floor one i have these two actors and that's how the system knows how to deal with actors visibility when you enter or leave a house or change floors the boolean describes their default visibility state if false upon begin play and when leaving a house those actors will be hidden else if true they will be visible and that's pretty much it there's one last edge case i need to cover and that's for the mask effect by default the coordinates used to project that texture will use the bounce volume so when creating that texture make sure you do use the same coordinates here i used blender to build a quad with the same bounds same location and extent right then use vertex colors to create a black and white tiny texture i could make however there might be cases where texture coordinates extracted from the bounds volumes around the one you want like here i have a house with a overhang so its bounds are way larger than what i need to draw that first floor footprint if that makes sense and to fix that we create another volume this time with another tag that one and this box will then be used instead to generate the coordinates for that footprint texture projection right that's it hopefully that wasn't too boring the system is explained in a little bit more details in the documentation provided with the project and again the blueprints are all very well documented and explained so you could tear them down and uh, understand how it's built basically anyway files are available on gumroad and as a tier 3 reward of my patron link will be in the description below hopefully my next video will be a little bit more interesting for you guys maybe a tutorial or a breakdown or something so yeah anyway consider leaving a like if you like the content and subscribe thanks for your time thanks for your support see ya